So let's get started and start covering some outlooks, tips and tricks, and things that we can do to get you guys more productive in your email. So we're going to start that off. I am Reese Orman with TechVera. We're going to go over a little uh, introduction, tell you all a little bit about us and, and the agenda for today, and then we're going to dive right in here. So very quickly, today we're going to be introducing ourselves and uh, you know what we're doing with our clients. We have a lot of clients that are attending this webinar. So, um, oh, we've got a question here as far as templates. We will definitely answer that here at the end. Um, in going over our introduction, and then we're going to talk about common pain points. We did some surveys, did a little research, and found places that people were kind of ineffectively using their time when it came to Outlook. Um, you know, maybe five or 10 years ago when we were in email and we were only getting 10 or 20 emails a day, some of those old habits, those kind of manual sorts and so forth were uh, made a little more sense. But as we grow in the technology world, as we become more and more reliant on email, uh, you know, that, that, that kind of model just doesn't work. And so we're going to go over some ways to really regain some of that time, automate some of that sorting, and uh, show you guys how to search through your inbox. You know, we find that a lot of our clients um, essentially end up using their Outlook, uh, you know, mail store as a filing system. You've got emails from clients, vendors, prospects, uh, team members all over the place. And, and to be able to reference that, go back and find that email from that client you worked with, you know, three, four, five, ten 10 years ago, it's definitely doable, but it can be a little frustrating without the right thing set up. And we're going to go over some tips and tricks and then take questions from the audience as well. So, this is the team at TechVera. We're a 14-member uh, IT organization based out of Denton, Texas, with a focus on providing turnkey support for small businesses. Um, you see me in the middle there with my little guy. I have a seven-month-old at home. That is Henry. And uh, time management has definitely become a topic of uh, a topic of focus for me as I balance, uh, you know, work and home life and being able to spend some time with my wife and, and this little guy here. So with that, my team has over 200 years combined experience in the IT industry. We have experts in various realms of IT from uh, server and network administration to Office 365 administration to end user support in so many various areas of IT. Uh, I myself um, have 16 years in the industry, been working in IT since I was you know, 15 years old, and um, I have seen this evolution with our clients and with my business internally. Uh, of email use and, and the capability and, and the features that Outlook has to offer. So we're going to go over those today. So prior to uh, going over that, just want to put a couple of things out there. The demo I'm going to be showing you all today is based on a couple of things here. We are utilizing Outlook 2016. So uh, a lot of the rules and settings, configurations, they're going to be relevant in, in prior versions of Office, particularly 2013 and 2010. Um, maybe minor changes in terms of layout, but overall these functionalities should be there. Now, Outlook is the email client we're using, uh, and then we are utilizing Office 365 to host our email. So that is Microsoft's uh, hosted exchange platform. Essentially, it's Microsoft's mail product on Microsoft's infrastructure. A lot of functionality and security and feature gains that you get with going that way. You know, in the past, you know, maybe five, 10 years ago, a lot of offices, if they were gonna host email, they would host it internally, you know, on their server at their office. And so we've seen uh, quite a migration here over the last couple of years of people moving away from that kind of setup and getting set up with uh, 365, very popular, uh, you know, Google Apps for Business, also another one that's very popular out there in the field. Very much, uh, we're very much an advocate of Office 365. And if you're in our flat rate program, um, you know, there's a good chance that you are using the same stack as far as Outlook and Office 365 as well. In addition, I'm going to show you all a couple of bolt-on tools that, that I utilize in Outlook uh, to help me get the most out of the solution as well. These are going to be third-party tools that lay over the top of Outlook. Um, so let's, let's dive right in. So when we surveyed our clients and we kind of assessed the landscape and, and what people were having issues with, here's a couple of topics that we found to be major pain points. Um, the first one, 
you know, we, we spend a lot of time re sorting emails. Uh, you know, emails come in, I sort them in these folders, but I'm dragging and dropping them and, uh, you know, just kind of a manual sort process. Another very common pain point that was brought up to us was, you know, Reese, I've got all these emails. I know they're in my my inbox or in one of my folders somewhere, but searching for them can be very, very difficult. Um, so we're going to go over some tips on how to search and how to make that uh, a little bit easier on you. The next topic that we we saw that we really wanted to uh, educate our clients on was managing shared resources. Um, you know, if you've got team members that are out in the field, you've got on-site service that your company offers, or even something as simple as, hey, we have a conference room and that's a shared resource and we need to all know when this guy's using it versus, you know, the sales team versus the accounting staff when they have their weekly meetings. So managing those shared resources is another pain point that we're going to cover. And then finally, spam email, big problem, right? Um, we're going to talk about ways to kind of mitigate against that and also talk about archiving that mail uh, and why it's important to look at, at utilizing a third party service to archive that mail, um, you know, moving forward. So let's start by talking about rules and alerts. So rules within Outlook are going to allow you to do some automatic sorting of mail. And there's a lot of really cool functions that can happen with this. You can tell an email, hey, when I get an email from John Smith, go to this folder and also forward it to this person. Or, um, you know, when the service request comes in with this subject line, play an alert, play a chime on the, the computer so that we know. Um, and these rules, they can follow your mail. So depending on how these rules are set up, and I'll show you a demo here in one moment, um, you know, whether I check my email on my laptop, on my desktop, via webmail or my iPhone, you know, if I get a message from John Smith and I've set up a rule to move his email to a particular folder, those rules are going to follow me wherever I go. So that's one more piece of uh, synchronization that, that Office 365 and Exchange brings to the table. If you have had problems in the past with, uh, you know, not having your, your email look the same on your office computer than your laptop, or, you know, you delete mail from your phone, but then you have to go back and delete that off of uh, off your workstation. If you're having issues with synchronization or redundant kind of email management, uh, there's a good chance you're on one of the kind of traditional email technologies like POP or IMAP, uh, you know, based email. So Exchange, you know, kind of eliminates that, that synchronization as an issue. So I'm going to bring my Outlook over here for y'all, and we're going to create a couple of rules. So the first rule I'm going to create, um, we have a voice over IP phone system here. Many of our, our clients and our flat rate engagements have those as well. One of the really cool features of that is that anytime someone leaves you a voicemail, that voicemail will then uh, get attached to an email and be forwarded over to you. So in order for me to create a rule, you know, I've got a voicemail folder here set up. In the past, maybe I just dragged these over, but I'm getting tired of doing that. So now I'm going to create a rule. To do that, I'm going to right click on that email and I go to rules right here. From rules, I'm going to create this rule. All right. And I'm going to uh, make some changes here. Now, the from on this is going to change because there's different. Uh, different phone numbers in the responses. So what I'm really looking for is that the subject line contains new voicemail. And anything, any email I get that has new voicemail in the subject line, I want to move that. And it's already selected here, but just for grins, we'll go ahead and select this. So now I've created a rule that anything that comes into my mailbox that has new voicemail in the subject line is going to move to this voicemail folder. If you go into the advanced options here, there's a lot of other things y'all can do. Um, and that's setting, you know, do I want it to do anything else? Do I want this rule to say, uh, anytime I get an email from John Smith that's sent directly to me, go to this folder? Or do I want it to, you know, if it's not direct directly to me, maybe, maybe that email was sent to uh, a bunch of people. Well, I want that in my inbox. Maybe that's different. So quite a few things you can do here in changing that. We've got the subject line here. Um, so when an email comes in with the subject line, new voicemail. 
we're going to move it to the new voicemail folder and that's the end of the rule here now if i wanted it to play a sound i could set that as well uh, maybe open up an application now some of these settings here if you set them they may change that rule into something that's called a uh, client only rule so we're going to go ahead and hit next some exceptions to the rule if you want to set those as well maybe i want all emails to go to this folder unless they're marked with high importance you're going to name the rule here and then you can tell it to go ahead and run this rule on messages already in your inbox and hit finish that's going to move that over and now any voicemail email that i get that comes in will automatically move over to that folder that's going to update on the server so that means that rule is going to follow whatever computer i go to now if i would have set that alert um, let's say I want the computer to play an audible alert when that rule comes in, uh, when that email comes in. That's going to change that rule from a uh, global rule to a, a local rule. And the way that you can tell, let me give this one second here to uh, finish updating. All right. And the way that you can tell everyone is if you go to manage your rules and alerts, which you can hit by going over here to file, manage rules and alerts. Here's how you'll be able to tell. Uh, in this line right here, in parentheses, it may say client only. If it does say client only, that means it's specific to this mail client. Um, and when you go to set the rule, a little prompt will pop up and say, hey, this rule is going to be specific to this computer. Uh, but that's where you can set, hey, maybe an alert or if you want that to print off or open up an application, you can certainly set that in there. This is a very, very useful tool. I'm going to open this back up very quickly here and just show you all. Uh, you know, it's, it's a lot less uh, of a hassle looking at my inbox, knowing that these are emails that I was not expecting. Um, you know, and anything I was expecting from my team, you know, that's a very common thing that I'll do. I've got a rule that puts all my emails from Justin, our, our CIO, into his folder. Um, for my administrative team, I've got two or three users that emails just get dropped directly there. But it allows me to know that I've got unread messages, that I need to manage those and take a look at them. But, um, you know, they're not clogging my inbox, per se. All right. So let's move forward and talk a little bit more. And now we're going to hit on searches okay so searching your email and outlook something that uh, we get a lot of questions about and I'm going to show you all some very easy tips on how to do this okay so to do this to search your inbox there's a couple of things you can do now there's a search bar right here that you'll be able to utilize um, to find email another way that you can hit that or get that uh, that list going is by hitting control E and when you hit control E from the keyboard it opens up that list now when you do that you'll see this search menu has appeared here right so if I hit escape I'll back out and that search menu goes away but that search menu is going to allow you to help uh, help build that search query so let's say I want to find emails from Amy Hodge, she's our contact at, at ConnectWise. And let's say I'm looking for something that has IT Nation in the subject line, bam. Okay, so now I have found those emails. Um, but this, this search window here allows you to really build a meaningful search query pretty quickly. Uh, another really nice tool with that, let's say I'm looking for an email from Justin and it has an attachment and I want to see that the message and let's say you're looking for an email that you know that was a good size email so I'm looking for emails from Justin that have an attachment and that attachment is over uh, three megs in size so you can see here we found one that was four megs but very very granular you can do a lot here in terms of your search criteria uh, but the biggest thing for people to, to realize is that in searching for mail, um, narrowing that the search criteria is going to be a very easy way to, to help um, narrow the results of the search. You know, if I just searched for all the emails.
from Justin, I could have, you know, there's 250 right there. But if I did Now, a space between these two words here. Now I'm looking at emails for from Justin that had the keyword MDM on there. So when you're building your search queries here, some of the things you want to look at are going to be the phrasing that you use with that. Um, we'll pull this back up. So utilize that search window that will appear here um, to build a search. Uh, you can see your recent searches here. Uh, control E will take you to search. Escape key will exit that. And there's all those features within that toolbar that appears. Um, one more thing to be cognizant of. If I go and I search um, just my voicemail folder, you will see if I'm searching right here, look at the at what this is going to search. So is this going to search just the inbox folder? Is it going to search the subfolders below inbox, the current mailbox, which is Reese at techvera.com, or all mailboxes? Maybe I have some other email data files that are open here and I want to search them all, or all Outlook items altogether. By default, when you search your inbox, it's going to search the entire mailbox. If I just go to search voicemail, the voicemail folder, it's going to change that to just finding results within that current folder. So, you know, if I was looking for um, an email from a voicemail from someone and I knew their number. Okay, there's the voicemails I've gotten from David Morris here recently. Okay. So, those are a couple of tips for searching. Um, really need to get in there and kind of experience it for yourself to, to kind of get everything. But, uh, very useful things here. A couple of other tips. Um, if you're searching and you use quotations, that's the literal phrase. So hitting on some more searching. So one more phrasing you can do is uh, put a not in there. So if I'm looking for emails from Justin that do not talk about MDM, that would pull this up. Okay. So let's move forward. That's a, a big component of, of managing your emails, being able to search and reference it in the future. So um, watching for that folder setting, whether it's set to the current mailbox or if it's uh, not, that's very important. And also you can save your searches. So if you actually go down here to the bottom of your mailbox, you'll see a um, search folder and you can right click on this and create a new search and this is just going to build out a search for you that you can come down here and hit and have it ready to go very useful as well all right so moving forward let's talk about some ways to handle that communication a little more effectively so distribution lists are one way to uh to really help out with with email communication and workflow within your business um, Typically, when we engage with the client, we will set up a couple of, of distribution lists, and those could be divided up by departments or maybe areas of the business. So maybe, you know, maybe if, if accounting at techvera.com needs to go to two people, we'll set that up to forward to those two people. You know, if you've got a sales department um, and, you know, five or six people underneath that, you can set up sales at, you know, your email domain.com um, to hit all your salespeople. Maybe you've got just remote users that you need to tell, hey, uh, hey, remote users, we're going to be upgrading our equipment this weekend. We're going to be down. Let us know if you need anything and, and the IT department can take care of you. And then lastly, the one that I use quite a bit is setting up a team at. If you email team at your email address dot com, that's a very effective way to touch every one of your your people that you're trying to get a hold of um, through one solid you know, one email address, one distribution list will hit all of your team members there. Now, another useful thing that can be done here is shared mailboxes. Um, so maybe you wanna have an actual mailbox, not just a distribution list, but a mailbox that sells at techvera.com. Now we could set that up and set it up in a way where maybe I've got a sales team underneath me and they're gonna be responding and corresponding with people that are 
you know, sending emails into cells at TechVera, but I just want to be able to monitor that. So that can certainly be done and that can be set up as a second mailbox that you could observe. Um, and it's just going to, whether or not you need a mailbox for that's going to be dictated by the need of the, of what you're trying to achieve. Are you looking to send and receive emails um, out of that mailbox or do we just need to receive them and then forward them on? So that's going to, to dictate whether or not you need to dedicate a mailbox for that. Um, another great resource is, is setting up a shared calendar um, for things like projects. You know, maybe you're you're in a service industry where you've got team members that are out and it, it would be a great just to have one calendar where you could see where your crews were at, where team members were at, if people were gonna be off, uh, if they had PTO or sick days, just having one reference point for that, something we've done many times for our clients. And like I said, the conference room calendar, setting up a calendar that everyone can see uh, so that they know, hey, if I need to use the, the conference room, I see that, you know, salesperson A has it blocked off from 9 to 10, but it's open after that. Okay, I'm going to create a meeting in there and, and reserve that space. So this is another way to help that communication and workflow throughout your business. If you have any ideas uh, as far as a need for something like this, let us know and we'd be happy to get this set up for you. So the next thing we're going to talk about is automatic replies. So you can set up automatic replies when you're out of office. And this is a really important thing to do because uh, there was a Washington Post article that was posted a couple of days ago. And uh, Adobe, the software company, they did a, a survey of 1,000 um, white-collar corporate America employees and found that 79% um, of those people are checking their email while on vacation. And, you know, 5% of those users are checking their email frequently. I know I'm guilty of this myself. It's a bad habit to break. But, you know, if you are out of the office and you do have clients that have the expectation to get an immediate response from you, here's something you can do to let them know that you're, you're out of the office. So I'll bring my inbox back over here. Now, next week, I know I'm going to be out next Wednesday. Uh, I think my wife and I are going to go check out the state fair. So if I wanted to create an automatic reply, I could do that right here. And I'm going to say, I only want this set next Wednesday. And I'm going to check my email in the morning. So just from eight to six that day. And you could write your message here. set my message up. Now, another cool function here is that you can set specific rules. So this is when anyone inside my organization, you know, any of my team members email me, they'll get this. You could set a separate uh, response here to your people outside the organization. So any clients or vendors and so forth. And then you can go in and set rules as well. So from rules here, you can then add some very specific rules. If I get an email from this person, go ahead and forward it or let me see it or alert me. Um, reply with a custom template for that person. So there's there's a lot of control. It just takes a little bit of time setting this up and kind of evaluating your needs to make that happen. All right. So moving forward, those are uh, that's how we're going to set automatic replies for out of offices and lots of control there. And that's done per mailbox. So if you have multiple mailboxes, you'll want to set that up per mailbox. So uh, another pain point that we had seen with businesses is uh, not having uh, a, a global address book or a kind of global contact list that everyone can, can utilize. And so um, this can certainly be done. Um, and a couple of things we want to cover with that. Now, I think we all fall victim to the kind of auto-populating email um, here. So when you have an email address that just kind of auto populates here, that's not necessarily a contact. More often than not, that's what's called autocomplete. And so Outlook 
kind of recognizes once you've added, emailed someone several times and it, it applies this autocomplete. Now you can certainly add them to your contacts by right clicking and going add to, but your contact list is going to be here in the two. You hit that two line, you will see uh, your contact list. Now, something we've done for many businesses is let's say, let's say the CEO of the business, you know, he's been in email communication with some of his clients for 10 years, 15 years, but you've got new sales guys that are, that are, you know, uh, being hired, brought on, and they don't have all this information. And so what we have done for clients in the past is export out and build a master ad address book that all the employees can access. So now, you know, if that opportunity comes in, um, that contact information is accessible for whatever team member needs it. Um, just one more piece that you can use to, to really manage your contacts uh, more effectively. Now, those search features that we went over, those can be utilized in calendars as well as contacts. So you can search your contacts here and do all that kind of stuff as well. So um, let's move on to our next topic here, task lists. Okay. So um, another very important piece um, of managing your productivity. I, I have found myself many times, you know, I'm, I'm just looking for a certain email. I'm waiting for an email response from a client. And shortly after that, maybe 30 minutes later, I realize, okay, I'm completely off topic because I started responding to other emails and kind of, you know, went down the road of, of getting distracted. So the best way I've found for me personally to manage uh, this type of environment is by flagging things for follow-up. So this can all be managed with an outlook, but let's say, um, here's an email from my contact at ConnectWise, and I do need to follow up with her, but I'm not going to be doing that right now. So I'm just gonna right click on the email. You'll see follow up here, and you can set the due date of that task. So let's say I just need to get this done here before the end of the day tomorrow. I'll flag that for me to respond, and then going over here to your task list, then you can manage uh, all those tasks. So here are tasks that I've marked for myself to follow up uh, this week. Tomorrow I need to follow up uh, with that correspondence with Amy and I can double click on it and that will bring that message up. Now, once I've handled that, I can uh, right click on this until it mark is complete and that task will go away. So very, very useful stuff here. Um, I've used those task lists for a while now and it, it helps being able to quickly mark something and then follow up with it later. And also you can customize your flags within that as well. So maybe you wanna set different priorities or you want to um, change some of those. You can actually set all that up within here, set up a custom date range, um, but then you'll get reminders and that will be, um, you know, allow you to, to manage that a little more effectively. So the next thing that we're gonna talk about and the next piece of Outlook that, that we found a lot of people really not utilizing to its full potential, it's gonna be calendars. So you can do so much with calendars within Outlook and particularly when you're using Exchange and your team members have Outlook and they have their calendars set up, this is very, very useful. So um, we're gonna show you how to send a meeting request. So, Let's preface that, yeah, let's do that right now. So I've got a demo user that I've set up here. Um, and this demo user emailed me and said, hey, we've got a few action items we should review. Can we meet tomorrow after 4 p.m.? Okay, perfect. So I'm going to open that email and you'll see this little meeting option pop up here. You can also hit Control-Alt-R and I'll do that just here from that email, boom. And that will create a, uh, a calendar invite. Now, this gentleman said that he wanted to do this after four tomorrow. So let's just propose 430. And there's the subject. If you put a location in here, many people when they have their, their phone set up with their email, the uh, location services within iOS or Android, this will give them kind of click, click through directions to your office. So let's say this was gonna be at our office. All right, 
And what's really cool about this is it's taking the the content of the email and it's it's plast you know pasted all that straight into the uh, straight into the message here. And let's say I want to remind the client. So an hour before that meeting happens, I want him to get a reminder and and myself as well. So now I'm going to send that to that end user. They will get a meeting request on their end, and on their end they're going to meet, get an email that has an accept, a decline, or a maybe. So this is really useful as well. You can see um, that demo meeting's been created here. Here it is on my calendar for tomorrow at 4.30. And the end user will get that. And so what's really cool for you as the person that is scheduling this is that you can uh, get the update right here. So as soon as that user's accepted it, you'll get an email that comes in that says that they've accepted it. So if you're scheduling a meeting with, uh, you know, with a new client or partner, very easy to get that acknowledgement. Hey, I saw that they accepted this. This is now on their calendar on their phone. I know they're not going to miss it. The other way that you can create a meeting uh, appointment is to just simply go to the calendar down here at the bottom. Here's your email. Here's your calendar contacts and tasks. So we're just going to go create a new appointment. Um, we're going to say, you know, it's a test appointment where it's at. And then we're going to invite people and you can send this to anyone with an email address does not have to be within your organization. Um, but that's the other way that you can create that, uh, that email. You can also change these settings. You can allow people to propose an alternate time to do that meeting. Um, and you can give them a couple of options for time as well. Now, one more piece of managing calendars is managing and using calendars is doing this with multiple calendars. So we're going to talk about that. So very useful tool here. Here is my calendar for the work week. And um, here's a couple of my team members as well. So these are all their individual calendars here. Let's say I just wanted to get an overlay of everyone's calendar. With this little arrow here, you can create a view that is an overlay of everyone's calendar. And then by using the color coding here, you can determine who's, who's who and what they've got going on. So this is a really useful feature if you're looking for a good availability of time. You know, hey, when could we all meet on Friday? Well, it looks like we could meet, you know, around 2 p.m. and that would work. Very useful piece there. Now, in addition to that, you can actually create an appointment and use what's called the scheduling assistant. So I'll create a demo here. So let's say I want to have a meeting with, uh, I want Tyler in there and and Justin and okay so this will give me a couple of uh, and it's going to load see these suggested times over here it's gave us a couple recommendations where it's compiled all our calendars and there's a couple of uh, availability options so using that scheduling assistant you can definitely find open times um, for those for those meetings All right, so we have covered quite a bit there, ladies and gentlemen. Now we're going to go into the bonus round of some cool tips and tricks, and then we'll ask some questions here after that, and we should be wrapping up here in about 15 minutes or so. So here is uh, one of my favorites, delayed emails. So if you're like me and you're doing a lot of email on the weekends, you may not want to bug your team right that second. Maybe you've got something that isn't time sensitive. Uh, maybe you worked, you know, a late night. You don't want to be pinging these people at two or three in the morning, but you'd like them to get your email, um, you know, later on. I use this all the time with my team. I'm a little bit of a night owl sometimes. So uh, let's say I was sending an email to uh, our marketing officer, Lauren. Um, So I've got my subject, I've made my email, everything's good there. Now, here's where the magic happens. Select options right here, and there's a few things that I can do. 
Of course, you can request delivery receipt. That will ensure that when they get the email that, that you get an acknowledgement. You can also request a read receipt. And this is really useful if you're sending an email to someone, they're hard to get a hold of, communications may be a, uh, not a strong point for them. You can at least get an acknowledgement that they've seen the email, that it's been delivered to them and it, it's been read, right? So to do the delayed send, I hit the delay delivery under more options. And I'm gonna tell this, I don't want this email to go out until tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. So now that email will sit in my outbox. You'll see it right here. If you, if you do a delay on it and you need to go back and make some changes, you can certainly do that here. But it's just gonna sit in the outbox until that time constraint hits. And from there it will uh, then be sent. Now some additional features you can set here. You can set this to have replies go to someone else. Um, you can set voting buttons, uh, all the other kind of stuff, marking importance of the, uh, you know, flagging the email. If you need to flag it as confidential or, or personal, whatever the case may be. So very cool features you can do there for delay sends, but I use these all the time. Um, you know, I'm build up all my emails to go out on Sunday. They all start going out Monday morning at 7 a.m. By the time we're in the office uh, rolling at 7.30, I've got my correspondence out. I'm waiting on follow-ups. Um, just a very useful tool. And it, it keeps you from bugging your employees or your team members or your clients at, at weird hours just because you're sending emails out. Now, uh, one tip that I want to give you all on that is um, that outbox and that delay send is going to be specific to the Outlook instance that you're using. So if I have an, uh, a message in my outbox uh, on my desktop, that's not going to appear on my laptop or on webmail. That is specific to this Outlook client. So you'll want to keep that Outlook client open. So what I will do is when I'm at home on Sunday, I'll draft all those emails, keep my Outlook open, um, and then Monday morning it kicks all those off for me. Um, signature management. Now, this is something that, that we've become quite fond of. Um, you know, we have a lot of clients that have asked us about tools to manage signatures. Inevitably, there'll always be one employee at the business that's using some wacky font or, uh, you know, all different colors in their email signature, and it, it's just not unified. And so we have uh, aligned ourselves with a vendor that offers a signature management solution. And so what I mean by that is um, when I create a new email, you're going to see my um, my picture and all my information appear here. Now, up until today, we had a banner that was advertising below that that was promoting our webinar. Now, if a client clicks on that email, clicks on that signature, and we're tracking all the analytics behind that. Uh, the beauty of this is that it's it's centrally managed. So. If you guys, you know, if you had email signatures with 50 employees and we needed to update a contact number or an address or, you know, put a marketing message out there for your end of year sale, that can all be managed uh, on the back end and we manage and support that. In addition to that, it works across all the platforms. So whether you're on uh, Outlook on a desktop, whether you're using webmail, uh, even uh, Outlook web access from your phone, those signatures can follow across all of those places. One other thing that we've done is we've set a couple of different signatures. So when I create a new message, it automatically populates with this signature. But if I'm responding to someone and we've already got a thread growing, maybe they don't, they don't need that big, long signature. So we have a condensed, kind of more mobile-friendly signature that comes back on replies. Just one more feature, one more thing that can be done here. So we've been very, very happy with that. And another great tool that we advocate for is uh, Skype for Business. Now, a lot of people know Skype. They've heard of it before. Skype for Business is essentially their messaging service geared specifically towards small business. And I'm going to bring my Skype up here. Let's see. All right. So my Skype for Business, this allows me to message with my team members at any time. Um, you can actually do a lot of really cool stuff here. So this integrates with your calendar and it knows that I'm in a meeting right now. It knows I'm in this webinar. So that's why I have this little red dot here. You know, if I needed to, to have a quick conversation with a few people here, I could simply select them, 
start a instant message just like that. You know, if I wanted to get the webcam going, I could get that going as well. So a lot of really cool features here. This has saved us a lot of time in terms of, uh, you know, when my assistant lets me know there's someone in the lobby that needs to speak with us or, you know, just avoiding that getting out of, you know, getting out of your office, getting out of your groove uh, to relay, you know, maybe a, a small amount of information. Another benefit of that solution is that any message that's ever sent or received through that Skype messenger gets stored in your Outlook file. So if you're using 365 right now and Skype, you'll have a conversation history and all your conversations will be there. So very cool stuff there as well. Now let's uh, wrap up here. And the last solution that we wanted to talk about is uh, spam and email archiving. So uh, Office 365 does have some spam filtering enabled and there's some settings that we can tweak in there to, uh, to give you a, a very good level of spam uh, protection. However, the uh, people that are sending spam messages out there are definitely always looking for the latest and greatest thing. And that nature of blocking emails and updates, there's always gonna be new attempts, new reasons why people are trying to, to get spam to you. So um, there's a couple of things that can be done. We utilize a third party spam and email archiving service um, that gives you another layer of protection. And some people may ask, well, Reese, you know, you've got my email in, in Office 365 and Microsoft's environment. You know, why do I need to archive it as well? So the reason why we do that is that every piece of mail ever sent or received from your domain can be stored, searched, and referenced using a third party archiving service. If you have a user that deletes an email that from 365, that email can be recovered for 30 days, but after that 30 day retention period, it's gone and it's gone for good. So this is the way that we can protect uh, a business, give the business owner uh, peace of mind, knowing that no matter when that email was sent, who it was sent to, there's a back end portal that you can then search and reference to find that email. You know, for some industries, financial, medical, uh, real estate, maybe there's a retention policy you have to adhere to. Uh, maybe you've got to store five or 10 years of email. So this is one way to do that. And if you, you need to search or reference those emails, very, very easy to do that. Now, one other thing I want to cover when talking about spam uh, is the clutter folder. So if you're using Office 365 and Outlook 2013 or 2010, you probably notice this clutter folder that appeared here. And this clutter folder is sort of an adaptive spam filter. And what I mean by that is that it kind of quantifies the messages that are sent to you. Maybe they're a newsletter, maybe they're not specific, um, you know, specifically addressed to you. And it, it, it kind of watches and it says, hey, you know, Reese hasn't been looking at these emails, you know, from uh, Time Clocks Plus. So it, it kind of adapts to you and how you're using your email and it moves emails to clutter. Now, that feature can be turned off. We can completely turn off that clutter feature. I like it myself. And if you do ever see an email that's being delivered here that uh, should not be, if you drag it to the inbox, that kind of clutter folder will, will learn um, how you're doing things and, and adapt. So that is getting close to wrapping up here. I know we did have one question on um, on email templates, and I will cover that here in one moment, but I uh, wanted to, to open up the chat here and see if anyone else had any, uh, any questions on things that we didn't cover, or maybe we just kind of glossed over there. Anyone have any questions? All right, so let's just go ahead and I'll answer the question that we had on the templated email. So you can certainly save a template. Let's say you've got a, a common email that, that goes out. Maybe it's an introduction. For me, you know, we don't offer web design services, but we've got a, a partner we refer all that out to. So I found myself constantly creating the same email over and over again. So what I have done is I've saved a template and now anytime I need to have that conversation with someone, it's very, easy for me to do that. 
And I can do that by going to uh, New Items. And I am going to be doing a So I've created a template and I'll show you all how to do that in one moment. Bam, there's my templated out. Here's who we refer web design to. Here's how you can reach them. Very standard stuff. And to do that, you do file. So let's say you've got your email set up, you got your template, you go to file, save as, and on the drop down here, you're gonna change that to a template. And now you've got a template that you can use whenever you need to create that same email that you're creating over and over again. So, does anyone have any questions? Are there helpful ways Outlook integrates with other Office software? That's a good question. So there's definitely other third-party tools out there that you can utilize. We went over... Um, we went over how Skype and calendars and uh, some of these other pieces are working. One thing I can show you all as well is let's say, uh, let's say I've got that email from that demo user uh, and I want to create some notes for that. I can create uh, a OneNote page and quickly move that. Now I have uh, this email created in my notes notebook and all the information is there now that's a microsoft bolt-on there's some other ones here you know i've got join me that's what we're using for this this meeting right now so i can actually create and schedule meetings through there um i'm not sure what's going on there but uh you can certainly use that as well so Anyone else have any other questions on, on Outlook or email management? This is the time. Let's answer them. Okay. Well, um, I think we've, we've got audio muted. I'm going to go ahead and unmute the audio in case anyone has any questions um, that they want to speak on over the phone, just in case they're not seeing the chat. So I'll do that. Okay. All right, everyone. So everyone is unmuted right now. If anyone has a question or has any comments or anything, just feel free to speak up and, and I'll help you out here. Anybody? Bueller? Okay. <laughs> so um, we covered a lot. If any questions, they want to do any follow-up, we'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, if you are in need of a technology partner to manage these items for you, please reach out to us. Uh, we can be contacted at 940-382-8644 or email us at dispatch at techvera.com and that will get you in touch with our, our front end service managers and they will schedule a consultation with either myself or one of our team members here. I uh, want to thank you guys for, for attending and I hope that everyone got some useful information out of this. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to be doing some more webinars here in the future. Uh, definitely going to have one going on the uh, second week of November. So we look forward to seeing you all then. And I hope everyone has a uh, great afternoon. Take care.